Good morning, good morning. It is uh, 3.12 a.m. I am on my way to the gym right now. I got, I said my prayers this morning and, and they were a little bit different. I don't know that anybody has ever prayed and partially sweared in a prayer. That makes sense. But I was feeling a, a certain kind of way and, and I'm and I'm hoping what I'm getting ready to say is going to resonate with somebody because if you take life, like really, really kind of look at life. And, and, and this morning it was weird because I went through a couple progressions. I went through progressions of, of imagining that my, my, my dad had passed away and looking at him in a, in a, in a coffin in a casket and thinking how could he die when I remember it's so crazy I remember I remember him picking me up you know I, you know most parents do that they they pick their their son up to get him closer to the basketball hoop so that they could touch the rim or make the shot. And when he picked you up, you felt like you were being picked up by the strongest person in the world. And now, you're, you're sitting there faced with the fact of, of the mortality of life. And these are my thoughts this morning. This is not <laughs> over a span of a week or a day. This is just briefly this morning. It's only three, three o'clock in the morning. I've already went through 12 processes. And I, and I, I rationalized the thought and said, death is a part of life. I can accept that. Death is a part of life. So, I get over it. But it brought into reality that even the strongest thing, and I remember I said to Silas and Saniya last night, I don't know why I said it, we were just sitting there and I said, I said, you know, you know, I'm going to die one day, right? And I don't know why I said it. Maybe I was preparing them for, you know, life. Death is an inevitable part of life. <laughs> and uh, Sanaya says, yeah, she's two. You know, she probably would have said, yeah, to anything. And Silas looks at me and he says, he says, he says, no, you're not. <laughs> he says, he says, no, you're not. I said, what do you mean? He says, you can't die. He says, you're strong. And he has this very perplexed expression on his face and the perplexed expression is telling me that at his age of seven he's trying to understand the concept of death and how it applies to his life and how it applies to me being in his life and at the moment he wasn't willing to accept that so I just left that alone and uh, so my prayer this morning was pretty vivid about yesterday. It was a perfect day. The day was, the weather was great. It had to have been about maybe 65, 70 tops. 
I had on something similar to what I'm work I'm wearing right now, something like a workout outfit. Comfortable. And I had signed up for his field trip. To of all places at this time of the year, the Phoenix Zoo. You know the animals out because well, it's too nice of a day to stay in. And I volunteer on his, his trips and it always gives me an opportunity to go to the store and pack his lunch. And I always bring extra for the other kids because some of them, I get it. I grew up in that same situation where nobody was there to pack me a special lunch for my field trip. So I just put together whatever I could myself. Or somebody might put me together or something, but I, I always like to make it a little special. I go out my way to make sure that there's some pretty cool stuff in there where they can say ooh and ow and oh, I really like this. And so we do that and this time was different. Ricky and Sanaya came, they met us at the zoo. You know, some of the things you can do when you when you work for yourself, you could take those moments out and enjoy them. But we're at the zoo and we ride the bus from the school to the zoo and get in there and you got all these kids from all these different schools. They're all there having their same field trip. And I'm here, I got, you know, Sanaya and Silas, and they're looking at the animal, and they're running around acting like animals. The weather's perfect. A lot like my memory of my dad lifting me up to touch the basketball hoop. I always remember that, him picking me up, him lifting me up to touch the basketball. Silas will never forget this field trip. And I've, I've been on, I think, probably all of his field trips, so it's not that. But the day was perfect. The snacks that we packed were perfect. So when I said my prayers this morning, I simply said, I said, God, I, I know that I have to run this business. And I know that my responsibility is to leave my children's children an in, in inheritance. But I also know that you can't get moments like that back. And I was so grateful. I was so grateful. And then after we're done at the, the zoo and come back, it's about 2 o'clock. So now I start working with Malachi at 3. And I have an appointment on the other side of town and I tell him, I said, go ahead and come on because he does our videotape. He does our recording. I said, go ahead, come on, let's go. Still perfect day. Still perfect day. I don't know. I don't know where I get this energy from, but still this perfect day. And uh, we're drive. I tell him to drive, which is, <laughs> you see how the day got even better? Now he's driving, <laughs> so I'm good. I'm chilled. And, um, and we're talking. And 
talking about the military. He's getting ready for that. And we're talking about um, prom. And then we're talking about tuxedos. Good thing. I remember saying what a blessing it was to be a father, to be a husband, to be in a position of responsibility. That's, that's, it's very important. Got to keep life in its perspective. Yeah, you have to make money. Yeah, you have to take care of your responsibility. You can't go on field trips every single day unless your business supports that. But you have to know why you're doing it. So my prayer this morning was God, just just make it possible where I can do both. Just make it possible where I can run a successful business and have a successful family. So that's what I'm believing for. Because it doesn't make sense in this very short life that we have it doesn't make sense to forfeit your time for money if you know that there's something better now that doesn't give you a that doesn't give like like i'm not cool with you know i i i i I, I dedicated and I committed everything to my kids and like, well, you know, they're not better off for that. You got to, you got to put some, you got to put some, you got to put some steak on the table. You got to put some meat on the table. That's an excuse. I believe it's possible to do both. Now, exactly how you do both, that's a different ball game. And that's what I ask for. Because I don't want to give up the business. But I also don't want to forfeit the experience of all the things that I've been blessed with because to have children is a huge blessing God God is basically saying I'm trusting you with one of my children to do the right thing but when he gives you a vision about a business and about wealth and abundance and prosperity. You can't let that go either. So you have to be obedient in in multiple areas. And it's funny because I was talking to a a young kid, his, his dad asked me to speak with him and I talked to him and you know, because I get a lot of people ask me about real estate and they want to do it. And and it really boiled down to if you wanted to have success, you just had to be disciplined. And if you can become disciplined, then you can have what you want. Make your prayers known. 
and you can just about have anything you want. Peace.